Hi, in this video, using this simple example, I will show you the basics of 3D modeling in Autodesk Fusion. You will learn basic operations that allow you to create simple 3D models. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new content. Let's start a new project. Here, we will begin by creating a sketch on the XY plane. To start creating a sketch, we select the Create Sketch command. Then we specify the plane on which we will create the sketch. In many cases, a sketch is the foundation of a 3D model. It is based on 2D sketches, on flat drawings, that we build the 3D model. We add operations to create 3D solids, such as the sketch extrusion operation, or the pocket operation, which removes material based on the sketch. This way, step by step, creating further sketches and further operations, we build the 3D model. Here we'll start by drawing a rectangle whose center will lie at the origin of the coordinate system. To do this, from the Create menu, choose Rectangle, and then select the Center Rectangle command. For the center of the rectangle, specify the origin of the coordinate system. Click here with the left mouse button and then set the dimensions of the rectangle. Enter 100 millimeters, press Tab, enter 70, and press Enter. We have drawn a rectangle. Next, select the circle drawing and draw two arbitrary circles roughly here. Press Escape to cancel the circle drawing command. These circles are related in such a way that their centers are at the same point. I would like the centers of these circles to lie on the x axis, that is, the centers of these circles should be in a straight line with the midpoint of the rectangle. To do this, I click the left mouse button in the workspace to deselect all geometries. I choose the horizontal vertical constraint. Now we select this point, select this point, and now these points are in a straight line. We press escape to cancel this constraint. Now we will add dimensions to these circles. Select the dimensioning command, click on the circle, and here we specify the diameter of the circle. Enter 20 millimeters and hit enter. The dimensioning command is still active, so now we click on this circle. We click with the left mouse button to place the dimension here, and as the diameter of the circle, we enter 50 millimeters and press enter. And press escape to cancel the dimensioning. I would like such circles to be on the other side of the rectangle as well. We can either draw those circles or use the mirror option. To use the mirror option, we need geometry that will serve as the reference for the mirror command. Now we will create such a line. Select line drawing and as you hover over this line, a snap will appear here. Click the left mouse button at this point. Do the same at this point. Once the snap appears, click the left mouse button. Then press escape. We select the line and change it to construction geometry so that it is auxiliary geometry. Then this line is selected. I click the left mouse button to deselect this line. Now we will add a mirror of these circles. While holding the shift key, select these two circles. Then choose the mirror command. We have selected the objects to be mirrored. Here we click in this place to define the mirror line. Select this line and click OK. In this case, we have the advantage that these circles have the same diameter as those circles. They are linked together. And additionally, we have applied a symmetry constraint relative to this line. These circles are simply mirrors of those circles. I click the left mouse button to deselect all geometries. I select dimensioning and add a dimension between the centers of these circles. As the dimension value, we enter 150 millimeters and press Enter. Then we select line drawing and draw a line in such a way that the first point of the line is placed on this circle. When the snap appears here, we click the left mouse button to place the first point of the line here. The next point of the line is placed here. We draw another line. The snap appeared here. 
we click the left mouse button to place the first point of the line here. The next point of the line is placed here. And we have a finished sketch. Based on this sketch, we will create a solid. We close the sketch. When it comes to sketches in Fusion, we can create one sketch. And based on that sketch, we can create several stages of a 3D solid. In a moment, you will see what I mean and how it works. Here, for example, we will start by extruding the rectangle, select the extrude operation, and specify the areas of the rectangle from which we will create the solid. I select these three areas. These three areas are separated by geometry, and if we want to add an extrusion for the entire rectangle, we must specify these three areas. We add an extrusion of 70 millimeters. We can do this by dragging the arrow, or we can simply enter the value from the keyboard. We click OK. Now this sketch has disappeared, but I want to use it in the next stage of creating the 3D solid. Just because this sketch is not visible doesn't mean it has been deleted. We can find sketches in the Sketches tab. Simply, the visibility of this sketch has been turned off. To turn on the visibility of the sketch, we expand this tab and click the eye icon to turn on the visibility of the sketch. Now let's create another part of this solid. We select the extrude operation and specify the parts of the sketch from which we will add another part of the solid. Let's add an extrusion of 10 millimeters. Pay attention to ensure that the type of operation is set to join mode so that the elements we are creating are connected to the previous part of the 3D solid. I just want to highlight that. If you create a solid and it turns out that the next part of the solid is not connected to the previous part of the solid, then pay attention to what type of operation was selected. We also have the cut type which removes material, but we also have the new body or new component type, which simply creates separate solids. We click OK and have something like this. Now I will turn off the visibility of the sketch so that the sketch does not obstruct our view. This way, we have created this solid. I will create another sketch. When it comes to creating sketches, we can create sketches on the planes of the coordinate system or on the faces of the solid. We will create a sketch on this face. We select this face and choose Create Sketch. Here, similar to before, we select the rectangle drawing from the center. We select the center rectangle command. We place the center of the rectangle at this point and draw the rectangle in such a way that the dimension of this rectangle along this axis is at least 100 millimeters. In this case, the rectangle may extend beyond this solid as we will be removing material. We can do this by creating a rectangle with a dimension of 100 by 50 millimeters. We enter 100. Here in this case, the second dimension was not added because I pressed enter too quickly. Such a rectangle was accepted, but that doesn't matter, because we can also add that dimension at this moment. I select this line, press the D key, and here I add a dimension of 50 millimeters, we close the sketch and based on this sketch we will remove material from this solid. I select this area, select this rectangle, and when it comes to removing material, we also use the extrude operation. I select this operation, and this time to remove material, I drag the arrow downwards. I drag the arrow to minus 60 millimeters. This value can be specified by dragging this arrow, or we can enter the value in this box or in this box, as you can see, the type of operation is set to cut, which means that we will be removing material from this solid based on the sketch. We click OK to confirm. We have something like this, and now we will create another sketch. This time, we will create a sketch on this face. Select this face and choose Create Sketch. Here we will create a slot. From the Create menu, select the Slot command and choose the Center Point Slot command as the midpoint of the slot, choose any point that aligns with the Y axis. Click the left mouse button here, and we will create the slot roughly like this for now. We press Escape to cancel the slot drawing command. Now we will manually add dimensions. First, I select this line, press the D key, and as the length of this line, 
we enter 60 millimeters. Now we select this arc and as the value of this dimension, we enter 10 millimeters. Here I entered 20, so now to change this dimension, we double click the left mouse button on this dimension and here I enter 10. We have something like this and now I select this point, select this point and here is the dimension value I enter, 50 and press enter. We have the slot fully dimensioned but as you can see this geometry is blue geometry. At this stage you may not know this yet but blue sketch geometry indicates that the sketch is not fully defined. We don't have a fully constrained sketch here. If the sketch is blue then we can freely change either the dimensions of the sketch or the position of the sketch. A fully defined sketch is displayed in black. In this case if I grab the slot geometry I can change the position of this slot. Even though this geometry is fully dimensioned, the position of this geometry is not yet fully defined. When it comes to creating 2D geometry in 3D CAD systems, geometry on which we build a 3D solid, we strive for this geometry to be fully constrained so that it cannot be freely changed in shape or position. In fusion, as I mentioned, geometry displayed in blue is not fully defined while fully defined geometry is displayed in black. To change this geometry's color to black, we need to somehow lock its position. We can do this easily. We will add a constraint between this point and the origin of the coordinate system that will ensure that these two points lie in a vertical line. This is a horizontal vertical constraint. Select this constraint, click on this point, click on this point, and now the position of this geometry has been locked. The sketch is displayed in black which means that the sketch is fully defined. Now if I grab the sketch geometry I cannot change either the shape or position of this sketch. We close the sketch and now based on this sketch we will remove material from this solid. I select the area of this sketch, activate the extrude operation. We can also activate this operation by pressing the E key on the keyboard. I press the E key and now based on this sketch we will remove material. I drag this arrow in this direction. I could leave it like this, but we can also change the extend type to all so that this extrusion is performed throughout the entire solid. Regardless of the dimensions this solid will have, if for instance we make some changes to this solid, this extrusion will always be performed throughout the whole solid. I click OK to confirm and we have something like this. Now, Let's also add fillets. Select the fillet operation and specify the edges to be rounded. We select these edges by simply clicking the left mouse button on the edges we want to fillet. OK, also these two edges. Here we set the radius of this filler to 15 millimeters. Similar to previous operations, we can do this by dragging the arrow or we can simply enter a specific value in this field. We click OK. With these few steps we have created this solid. Based on this simple solid I was able to show you the basic operations of creating 3D solids in 3D CAD systems. We will end here. Thank you for watching. Please check out other videos on this channel and please subscribe to this channel.